And good morning, options traders. And I hope everybody's looking forward to a great upcoming weekend. And I had a really good question that came up in one of the coaching calls. And somebody asked, why are in the money option implied volatilities so high? And it's a good question. If you look at a trading platform and you look at the deep in the money options, especially with the call options, you'll find that the implied volatilities are just through the roof. And if you understand what implied volatilities are, you can see where it leads a lot of new traders to say, hmm, something must be big and brewing here with this stock. There must be some type of merger or acquisition. But you know, why is everybody flocking to these super deep in the money options? Well, it turns out that that's really just a mathematical quirk. When you're looking at deep in the money options, you don't even want to pay attention to the implied volatilities. So why is that? Well, remember that implied volatility shows the volatility that's implied by the market based on the current market price. And really all we're doing is we're just working the Black-Scholes model in reverse to come up with this number. So for example, let's take a look at a Black-Scholes pricing model. And here we've got the stock at 100, strike of 100, 30 days to expiration, 20% volatility and 1% interest rates. And it's telling us that the call should be worth $2.32. So remember, this is the fair value for the option. And this just simply means that if you were to buy or sell this option hundreds of thousands of times at this price under these conditions, you would just break even. So it's kind of a long run idea. This is a price that's not too high or too low for the buyer or for the seller. It's fair to both parties. However, let's say that we have observed all these numbers. We know this is the stock price. This is the strike we're interested in. This is the time to expiration. And these are the current interest rates. All of those factors are known. But let's say that we go into our broker's platform and we see that this option is trading for $3.50. Well, what's the implied volatility? Why is there a discrepancy? We're coming up with a fair value of 232. But the open market says 350. Well, we can figure out the implied volatility down here under the implied volatility calculator. And if we're looking at calls, just choose calls. If you're looking at puts, choose puts. And you're going to type in the current market price. So in my example, we're seeing that it's trading for 350. And then we choose calculate. And the model is telling us that the volatility to make this option price 350 is 30.26. So watch this. Let's come over here and let's type in 30.26. And there is the 350 market price. So once again, the only number that we could be differing on over here compared to the market is the volatility. The others are all absolutely 100% known. So we would say, well, the market is implying that the future volatility, the volatility over the next 30 days, it's going to be more in line of 30%. And we're just coming up with that by looking at the current market price and then backing into it into a Black-Scholes model and saying what volatility is the market implying just simply by being willing to pay this 350 price. So once you understand what the implied volatility is, you'll have a better understanding of why the in the money options can have really high implied volatilities. So let's take a look at a hypothetical example. Let's say that these are different strikes for a given stock for the month of October. And on the vertical axis are the implied volatilities. So if the stock is trading at, let's say, 20%, this is the actual recorded volatility for the stock, let's say over the past two or three or four months, then we would expect that all of these strikes should also trade at 20% volatility. However, in the real world, you're going to find that that's rarely true. We might see that the 35 strike here is trading way up here. You know, maybe this is an implied volatility of 40 or 50%. And then the 40 strike might be at 30%. 45 might be down here. The at the money option must trade at least super close to the stock's current implied volatility. And that's because there's what's called an arbitrage opportunity if that's not true. So those are almost always going to be identical. But then if we go to the, let's say, out of the money calls, 
we're going to start seeing these implied volatilities start hiking again. So this is what's called a volatility smile. And this is what the trader was asking, especially down here. Why are these very deep in the money options, at least for the call options, why do they have such a high implied volatility? And it seems like the market must be implying that something big is going to happen. Well, you could certainly make that argument if you're only maybe one strike in the money, two strikes in the money. But once you start going a lot of strikes in the money, in other words, super deep in the money, you can just forget about this implied volatility. It's virtually meaningless. Well, so why is that? Well, deep in the money options have extremely high implied volatilities, but not because something unusual is brewing. What's happening is that deep in the money option calls are becoming more like stock. Remember that deeper in the money you go, the extrinsic value must be falling towards zero. And that means that that in the money option is behaving far more like shares of stock. It's not really even an option anymore. However, and here's the kicker, the market will always price a value greater than zero for that extrinsic value. Now, yeah, there's an exception when you get really close to expiration, it might trade at parity, which is just the intrinsic value and no extrinsic value, but even that's pretty rare. Most of the time you're going to see some type of extrinsic value, even though theoretically it should be zero. So if the extrinsic value is theoretically zero, but is actually, let's say 10 cents, the only way that that can happen is that implied volatility is through the roof. So it's really, again, more of a mathematical quirk. So let's go back over to the Black-Scholes pricing model and see how this works. Okay, so now back over into the pricing model, we're going to use the same numbers that we used initially, 20% volatility, we came up with an option price of $2.32. But let's say that we were interested in maybe the 60 strike. So we come down here, we make this 60, and the model tells us that the call option should be worth $40.05. So that's 40 bucks of intrinsic value and just this tiny little five cents of extrinsic value. But let's just say that for some reason, the market is trading for $40 and 10 cents, just an extra five cents over and above the fair value. But watch what it does to the implied volatility. Make that 40, 10. See, now we're at 75% volatility, even though the stock is trading at 20% volatility. And if this were trading for $40.15, just another five cents, now it cranks you up to 82%. So once again, the whole reason for this, this mathematical quirk is that as the extrinsic value starts getting really close to zero for the theoretical price, but the market just if for no other reason because of the bid ask spreads, starts to tack on an extra five or 10 cents. What it does as a result is that it jacks up this volatility into the stratosphere. So again, the main point to take is that when you're looking at these options deep in the money and you're seeing these outrageously high implied volatilities, it's just a mathematical quirk and you can completely ignore it. If you'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course and Strategy Lab at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.